This is a podcast that seeks justice. Justice for the lives stolen by those in society that hide amongst us every day. Hidden in our towns, cities and countrysides, the places that we work, and sometimes in our very own homes. This is Hidden Killers. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Tony Bruschi. Today, we're joined by Mark Pucci, retired NYPD detective and founder and CEO of the National Institute for Law and Justice, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose sole mission is to provide investigative services to victims, victims' families who are victims of homicides, abductions, and missing, murdered indigenous men, women, and children and cannot afford to pay for the services themselves at zero cost to the families. I want to thank you, Mark, for joining us. I want to get your insight into the uh, Koberger case and talk about some of the insight that you may have that uh, uniquely uh, would be observed by detectives and not necessarily us on the outside and some of the techniques that are going on, uh, zeroing in on confirming uh, alleged killer Brian Koberger is, in fact, the perpetrator of these crimes. Okay, great. So what I, I mean, just in my personal, you know, experiences you know, as a detective in NYPD, what I love is, you know, and say even more in the most recent past is the convergence of what I would call, you know, old school shoe leather, you know, detective work. Yeah. And then, you know, coupling that together seamlessly with, the modern technology, which, you know, virtually priceless, um, you know, in, uh, as you had just mentioned, you know, literally confirming or closing that, um, you know, the definition of, you know, uh, guilty or, you know, allegedly guilty or probable cause, sure. um, <clears throat> you know, uh, especially with DNA, you know, where it's a hundred million to one or, you know, whatever percentage they're going to assign in these individual cases. But what really, um, you know, caught my attention, you know, and uh, gave me that warm, fuzzy feeling was, um, you know, one of the most traditional uh, and probably obscure techniques um, that has been used, you know, probably since before, you know, electricity (laughs) was, was, you know, widely, uh, you know, widely available is uh, what we call a garbage pull. Okay. So, um, and, you know, even more so in the past where, you know, people wouldn't have shredders or they weren't concerned about um, identity theft and other, you know, other uh, things, you know, wh- where they might more destroy, you know, uh, certain things that they're going to throw in the garbage. Um, that's always been a tried and true um, kind of, you know, off the radar technique um, by, you know, seasoned detectives. Uh, you know, I've myself have used it, you know, innumerable times. Um, and the amount of information that you can elicit uh, from that, you know, but in this case in particular, what they uh, were looking for was, you know, with with the, you know, the one sample of DNA that they had recovered, um, you know, from the snap on the, the, the sheath for the knife, um, with the advent of familial DNA, um, once they, you know, felt that they had identified him, they were zeroing in on all of the other technologies, you know, uh, cell phone pings on the towers, uh, the vehicle, you know, and, and, and other, you know, uh, you know, general, uh, evidence. They, uh, re- requested in that the Pennsylvania police do garbage polls in order to try to acquire items so that they could through familial DNA, get a match mm-hmm. with, with Brian Koberger. Um, and they were successful with that, with, with uh, a sample of DNA that they were, I believe they were able to identify as paternal with his father. Mm-hmm. Um, then the other coordination with that, which I know in the recent past, I believe the FBI is denying, um, you know, saying that it was just a rumor or it's, uh, it's not accurate mm-hmm. that they had requested that the Indiana State Police and the Hancock County Sheriff's Department um, affected two um, car stops yeah. um, in order to obtain, you know, with specific requests uh, to obtain body cam video of Brian Koberger's hands, um, which, you know, I would uh, I think safely assume 
you know, in uh, a frenzied, you know, type of multi, you know, stabbing event like that between, you know, becoming exhausted, you know, the adrenaline dump, any resistance, um, there's always a great likelihood that the perpetrator is going to inadvertently, you know, injure themselves at the same time. So, uh, you know, I would assume that they were looking at his hands to see or to confirm that he may have, uh, you know, injured himself with a knife as well. It's interesting. It's almost, it, it's old school techniques meeting new school techniques and them converging to help put the pieces of the puzzle together uh, in, in a more definite way, really. Yes. Yes. Very deliberate, um, you know, and the, the integration, you know, is, you know, it's, it's really, really, really using, you know, as you said, the old school with the new school um, and creating almost a perfect storm of, uh, you know, empirical evidence. Were you surprised at all that Koberger didn't prepare for a garbage pull to be done on him, considering his studies and, and what he was learning about? Or did he think he was just too smart to get caught? You know, uh, that's it's it's probably a little bit of both. Um, you know, I mean, re reading some things about, you know, um, you know, some problems that he had. I know uh, very recently, you know, a, a letter has uh, uh, been, uh, you know, brought forward where I guess his uh, his advisor or his uh, professor, which he was assisting, um, where he was having a lot of problems with uh, the way that he was uh, dealing with female students mm -hmm. and possibly even female staff. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you hate to say, but, you know, he, he may be the proverbial, uh, you know, guy who thinks he's the smartest guy in the room, yep. which as a detective, we welcome that <laughs> as our as our suspect <laughs> because he's going to inadvertently, um, you know, make mistakes. Yeah, might, might be smart for only so long. There was uh, frustration yeah. and there still seems to be uh, with uh, the Gonzalez family hiring outside investigative help on this case. Walk me through how a family would would come to you for outside help. What do you do differently than local or federal investigators uh, at the National Institute for Law and Justice? And why would someone uh, come to you? So I mean, that's a great question, and I appreciate you uh, you asking me. So um, first and foremost, as a retired detective, I have the utmost respect for any other law enforcement, you know, whether it's uh, state, local, federal, um, that ha is conducting or has previously conducted the investigation. Our first um, interaction when the family comes to us is to really, really do an intensive um, review of all all the known facts so it could be a completed investigation where a conclusion has been made or it can be you know an investigation where similar to this uh the families felt that law enforcement wasn't being transparent which we understand that now you know hindsight in hindsight because they were in the midst of conducting you know um you know very intricate you know um you know co um jurisdictional, you know, coordinated efforts in the investigation. Um, so any leak at all would have been very detrimental to the case. Um, you know, so it, it's a, it can be any congruence of, of reasons, you know, uh, it's not moving at the speed, which, which they wanted to, the conclusion isn't what they, you know, believe or hoped it would be. Um, but again, the first thing we do is, is a very, very comprehensive review of, of all known facts. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, the last thing you want to do in any of these you know, potential cases or investigations is provide any false hope of, of any you know, different conclusion, let's say. Sure. Um, so, so with that, uh, when, when in fact we do feel that, you know, there, there is something here, um, you know, maybe, you know, resources, whether it's, you know, a, a smaller department or manpower or, um, you know, in some major cities, the next shiny object has come along and, mm -hmm. you know, now, you know, um, it's not, maybe it's not a case garnering national or international attention. Um, and we do, uh, you know, advise the family that we will accept the case. First thing we do is interact directly with the law enforcement entity or entities 
advise them that we're there as an additional resource. We're absolutely not the competition. We're two parallel lines. Mm -hmm. And with our, say, national reach, um, you know, so we're not just using, you know, a potential forensics, you know, uh, say company or municipality that's local. You know, we have the ability to bring in, you know, uh, anyone national that may be the best fit for that um, and would have the resources as well and the time to dedicate specifically and solely to that investigation. Um, you know, we, we generally have very, very, um, you know, open, welcoming rapport um, because again, you know, we're not the, we're not the competition, you know, yeah. as I like to say, you know, uh, unfortunately I don't have handcuffs anymore. So, you know, the, the law enforcement entity whose jurisdiction it is ultimately would have to, you know, make that arrest if, uh, if, and when we reach probable cause or, you know, the judicial, uh, you know, branch mm -hmm. would, uh, would have to make the choice to prosecute. So we're absolutely just a partner organization in the private sector and we move at the rate of private industry which we know we uh we we know and assume is sometimes different than uh municipalities or sure um you know other court system is there always more to be learned and more to be discovered in a case or are there times where Law enforcement truly, they've done everything that they possibly can. They're doing more behind the scenes than families even know. But understandably, the family is going through trauma and extreme sorrow and pain, and they just want more and more answers. But sometimes there just isn't more to be found in, in some cases. Yes, exactly. And that's, you know, um, what I had uh, referenced earlier with, with our extensive review. Um, you know, and sometimes we'll come back to a family and we'll say, listen, you know, we we feel that the, you know, the conclusion uh, or our outcome will be the same, but we understand that let's say the last ten days of your loved one's life are a mystery. So we can offer that. You know, maybe we can put together more of a comprehensive timeline, which which might not be the focus of you know the say like the prior law enforcement agency sure. in the determination. You know, let's say, God forbid, it was a suicide. Um, you know, once that determination is there, there, there's really no reason for, you know, say, you know, like a county sheriff's office to to go and then try to inform the family that, you know, that this was the downslide that your loved one experienced over the last 10 or 12 days. Mm -hmm. um, but that's essential to the families and the loved ones in in their own ability to accept what has happened and then begin the healing process and you know hopefully eventually have you know closure closure and peace with it so so we we can all uh, you know also offer that um you know where it wouldn't really even fall under you know a law enforcement yeah. uh you know auspice but uh to answer your question uh there's many cases where everything has been done that can possibly be done you know every witness every lead mm -hmm. you know has been uh you know fully uh explored and vetted um, and sometimes just having us come in, you know, and actually confirm that, yep. you know, but, but, you know, say sit down across a kitchen table and, and explain it, you know, heart to heart, I, you know, looking each other in the eye and, you know, yep. holding the, the, you know, the family member's hand, you know, goes a long way, um, you know, more on a personal level. Mark Pucci, thank you for your insight into the case against Brian Koberger. Very much appreciated. If you like the show, press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates and discussions on this case. Until next time, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for joining us.